There's one. Get the net. That's a big fish. Oh, that's a good one. Come on, get the net. Mm. That's a fish, Kyle. That's a good fish. Oh, man. Ooh, that one did not feel that big, Kyler. Yeah! Boom, baby! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna do another breakdown of the Harris chain, and I'm gonna do another one of this um, ditches because the first one was so successful on Lake Harris. It's already got a lot of views just being up for a couple of days. I've had a lot of responses to it, <clears throat> a lot of positive responses to it. So I want to do another breakdown. I'm going to do this breakdown on ditches in Lake Dora that we fished down there in the team championship. Um, before I get started, if you're new to it, watching the channel, um, if you would, just become, um, become a subscriber. Also, like the video if you would. If you have any questions, um, just put it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Or you can look me up on Facebook as well and message me and I'll message you right back. <clears throat> okay, so let's jump into this here. So Lake Dora, if you guys are not familiar with the Harris Chain of Lakes, Lake Dora is one of the eight lakes on the Harris Chain of Lakes in Central Florida. The Harris Chain of Lakes is around 30 minutes to an hour northwest of Orlando, depending on which lake you're going to. Um, lake Dora is shallower than Lake Harris, so these, these ditches, they can be more difficult to find and to understand, and that's exactly why I'm doing this video, is to help you understand how to find these ditches and how to fish them and understand why these bass are in these ditches this time of year, especially in the winter time. Go down here through my notes, sorry. Um, here you will see the Harris Chain of Lakes and exactly which lake is Lake Dora. All the eight lakes are connected by water and accessible by boat. Most of them are connected by a river or man-made canals or just naturally connected with the water. <clears throat> so next, this is Lake Dora you're going to see here in this picture. You're also going to see Lake Buclair, which is to the south. But I will cover Lake Buclair in another video. This one is just for Lake Dora specifically. So now in this next picture, this is a picture directly from my Lawrence unit. And this was the waypoints from the 2023 Bassmaster Team Championship practice the week of December. Uh, the first week of December was actually the second day of practice for us that we put into Lake Dora. You will see four different areas circled here in red, and that is the exact waypoints that I had. There is also an area of waypoints marking grass and some shell beds, but we didn't catch a fish in that area off to the south down there. You will see multiple waypoints in some of these areas, and that was from first. I idled over these areas looking for grass, looking for shell beds, looking for bass, and also looking for the ditches. The side imaging came in very big there for me to do this because it saves you a lot of time. I mean, you can drop your trolling motor and you can fish there, but there's not really many um, much point really fishing these areas if you don't find anything there. So it saves a lot of time just to idle over them. Even if you just got down imaging, idle over the edges of that grass and see if you can find any grass. The, I say that the edges of the Kissimmee grass, there are lily pads or outside the docks there and look for the submerged grass. And when I talk about submerged grass, I'll get into that here in a minute and I'll show you guys. So what I'm mainly looking for, I'm idling over these areas, is grass in this specific case is what we were catching them on. The water temps were in the high 60s and low 70s. I had fished some shell beds the day before in Lake Harris and had little success on them and there wasn't no fish really around those beds. But all our fish came off submerged hydrilla and eel grass out off the edges of this Kissimmee grass and lily pads and docks in Lake Harris the first day. And also the day before that, we went to Lake Yell before the off-limits had <clears throat> um, not taken place. We went to Lake Yell because it's not part of the chain. Technically, you can't get there by water, so we went there, and that's the pattern that we got on. Shell beds, though, are also effective on these points and around the ditches. Um, in the case, in this case, though, I was looking for grass, but those shell beds will be more effective when the water drops down into your 60s and higher 50s, which the tournament was actually won on shell beds in Carlton. That was because the water temp had actually dropped during the tournament. It got down to that right <clears throat> water temperature with me not catching anything on the 
shell beds. I did not have faith in that because I haven't really ever fished too many shell beds in my life, so I just stuck with what I knew and where we were catching the fish. Now, when I was speaking of the grass, I was mainly speaking of hydrilla. That was the main grass that the bass were relating to. But then here's a picture of the ill or this hydrilla you're going to be looking for. This is what a hydrilla looks like. And then having ill grass uh, mixed in, the submerged ill grass mixed in with the hydrilla, that's a big plus as well because it's a different kind of grass in there. And the more grass you can get in there, the better. And here's also a picture of the eel grass. And then you'll also see um, a picture of Kissimmee grass and lily pads here as well. So you guys can understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the different types of grass. Um, like I said, also finding the Kissimmee grass and lily pads up from the bank from these ditches. And this offshore grass is even better because they like to move up and out during these staging times, especially pre-spawn, um, post-spawn. They'll move in and out of these areas. Plus, it's also deeper water, so if the water gets colder, they can pull out into these ditches on them, and then they can pull up and feed quicker, and they don't have far to go to do that into that shallow water. We caught a total of 10 keepers this day for about 13 to 15 pounds on our best five bass. We was catching them primarily on a 2K jig subblade, which is a bladed jig um, similar to a chatterbait. We was throwing mainly a white color, and for the trailer, we was using the Big Hammer Lures 3.5 inch in a white color called Pearly Gates as the trailer. We also caught some on a quarter ounce peg Texas rig with the Big Hammer Lures Ringer Worm in June Bug color. Anybody that uh, goes to Florida, if you're not aware, June Bug is very effective um, anywhere I have been in Florida anyway. We've won a lot of money down there in Florida on June Bug, uh, just about in any style of plastic June Bug works in Florida. Now, in this picture here, it zoomed in a little on Navionics to help you recognize these ditches um, quicker and easier. I mean, zoomed out, sorry. It zoomed out to help you see these quicker and easier. Here is the dark blue is shallower water, and the light blue is going to be the deeper water. And the red here is kind of highlighting where that deeper water meets that shallower water. And you look at the light, lighter blue areas highlighted in red and how it creates a point. You see how it comes up to a point there on each of those sections? This is deeper water coming into that shallower water up there closer to that Kissimmee grass. The only one that doesn't look like this is number three, and it is more difficult and was our best area, and I'm guessing it was the best area because it didn't stand out as well until you actually zoomed in on your Navionics, which you're going to see here later. Now let's get into area number one on the map here. Let's break it down in each of these four areas and what you're looking for and why they are so effective. The red. This shows the deeper water in the ditch coming into the shallower water. This basically shows your ditch and how it, it doesn't really come up. That's just how I'm explaining it. But technically your ditch it drops out into the deeper water. But it runs up there, you can see where it stays deeper running up into the bank. And then the red, that is actually a point that comes out between those two ditches. And these points are very, that something to really, really look for and very crucial when looking at these ditches. If it just comes up and there's nothing there or any points, we found out it wasn't as well. So those points, they were holding really good on those points. That's because they can move up quickly on those points. And anywhere around the country, I've found fish love to stage up on points, especially wintertime, pre-spawn, post-spawn, summertime, pretty much all year round. Points are good just about everywhere. And then the yellow, these are the areas to look for that submerged grass, whether it be the hydrilla, the eel grass, or even hard spots like um, shell beds. These are the areas to look for. We caught three keepers from this area, and that was just fishing fast through all this stuff because it was practice. So we weren't, we were just covering water, not moving slow, catching a fish, um, shaking some off, not really trying to hook into them, just trying to see what size we had in these areas and how many fish they were holding. After you look over that picture there for a minute and kind of study it, I'll go on to the second area here. Okay, guys, now on to the second area. First, we're going to see a breakdown here of the ditch come up in red. And this will be the first ditch. And then now, in the second picture here, you're going to see a second ditch come off over to the left. 
And then next you're going to see a third ditch come off a little further to the left. After you look at the ditches there and how they come up, um, well, they don't really come up. They actually come, they would be coming out um, from the bank when they drop off and then they go run out into the ditch. But the way I'm explaining it, it's coming up into the ditch so you guys can kind of understand it better looking at it this way. Now the green, you're going to see the green pop up on the screen. These, this green represents points coming out into the ditch. You have a more defined point off to the right and then a smaller point between the ditch. And then lastly, you have a stair step point coming out all the way into the left or all the way to the left between the ditches on the left. Yellow, you will see the yellow areas and these are the yellow, uh, the areas to look for that offshore grass, that hydrilla in that eel grass. And then also if there's not grass there, um, shell beds. If you see shell beds on that with your electronics, that also holds fish. But in this case, we're looking mainly for the grass um, on the drop offs and the ditches here. Now, lastly, if this works properly, you will see fish symbols. And hopefully this comes up. I'm going to try some new stuff here with this. And I'm going to see all these fish symbols show up to kind of show you guys how these fish and where they're going to set up on this stuff so you guys can get a better idea how the bass set up and trans transition around these areas. So I'll let you um, look that over for a minute and hopefully that all works out with that and I can get more into that with some other images if I can get out how to figure how how to do that exactly. Now the third area, now remember how I told you when we was zoomed out that this one didn't show um, much of a ditch here, didn't really show it really being a ditch. <clears throat> so here is the picture zoomed in and in red is the ditch in 10 to 12 foot of water there. It's more of like a hole right there. And that ditch, once you zoom in, you can see these ditches better here. Next is the ditch coming up into the bank between the docks out of that deeper hole right there. And then off to the left here, you can also see a ditch coming out as well. And then if you look further to the left, you will see a third ditch coming into the bank right there as well. Now the green, now you see the ditches. And now let's look at the points in green. The first point is to the right of the ditch. <clears throat> and the point runs right into that deep ditch right there. Next will be green between the two ditches to the left. And then lastly here, well not lastly, but we're going to look at the yellow, which like I said is that offshore grass and shell beds. Those are the areas to look for that offshore grass and shell beds. And then lastly, we're going to use the fish symbols here again and show how they relate to these structures and how they transition up and down. Give you guys there a minute to look that over. Now onto the fourth area. In red, you will see the primary ditch there. That's your primary ditch we're looking at. And then next, on to the right, you will see the ditch coming into the bank. And then after that here, to the left a little, you will see another ditch. And then look a little more left and you will see a third ditch coming into the bank and then go a little bit further and you'll see another ditch coming in to the left over there. Now the green, you will see green here off to the left and it's a point between these two ditches. Look just to the right and you will find the next point on the right side of that ditch. Now look to the right and a little bit down and you'll see a third point coming out into that ditch. And then the last of the points off to the right, you will see two points stair stepping into that deeper ditch right there. Those points are very important to finding these fish because these points, um, like I've explained before and in this video as well, the points are great transition areas for um Fall, coming out of fall transition, during fall transition, coming out of fall transition into winter, the winter time pre-spawn when they're coming into pre-spawn, and then coming out of post or coming out of the spawn, which is post-spawn and summer. They move up and down here to feed, especially in the summer as well. So these are all great transition areas, and not all the bass spawn at once, especially in Florida. Um, they, they spawn throughout the year. I'm not exactly sure when they start spawning. It's around the end of January, start of February, usually in 
um, Florida down there. Florida is a little bit different than the rest of the country, at least the Midwest here. So they spawn a little further out and a little that's spread out a little more, not as defined as when they do spawn. And then here, yellow, you will see the areas to look for that offshore grass and shell beds once again. And then lastly, here is the fish symbols, and we'll see how that works out. I'll give you guys a minute to study that. And while you guys are studying that, I just want to thank you guys for um, everybody that's been watching the videos, everybody that's been commenting on the videos, everybody that's subscribed to the channel, everybody that... Um, has just been interacting as well. Appreciate all the support. The first video has been a big success. It's uh, already up over 700 views. It might be up over 800 now. That was last night. It was up over 700. The first video I did on the ditches on Lake Harris. So uh, the support is very appreciated. I appreciate you all taking the time to uh, watch the content and the videos and hopefully it's helping you guys. Um, just let me know in the comments if you guys go out and you catch them in these areas and how it helps you guys. Um, once again, I appreciate the support and I'll get some more videos up for you guys. Thank you.